All right, so Project Elixir. Now, this is a ROM for which a lot of you guys have been requesting me to make a video for the K20 Pro. I didn't really get the time to try it because understand, we have three devices and multiple things going on. So recently I thought that, you know, there's not much happening in the K20 Pro community. Like this is like two days back. So I flashed this ROM and I started using it. And the more I used it, the more I found out that this probably answers your question, which is the best custom ROM for K20 Pro. Now, I'm not saying this is the absolute best, but understand that there is no specific answer to which is the best custom ROM. What will be best for me probably might not be best for you or someone else. So, you know, keep watching these reviews, stay updated as in when a new ROM comes and give you better performance, better features and stuff like that. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the latest update of Project Elixir based on Android 12 for the Redmi K20 Pro and the Mi 90 Pro. But before we get into the details, if you have haven't already please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this if you think you like chatting with like-minded people please join us on telegram we have more than 1500 people over there with similar devices discussing all sorts of things it's really exciting over there and if you think the hard work is worth the effort well please click on the join button and support the channel now without further ado hello awesome people welcome to phone ops my name is kalash let's get going So let's see what we have here. We have Project Elixir S, S stands for Android 12, ROM Rafael, version 1.2 and uh, released on the 29th of December. So we are a little late on this particular review. Anyways, that doesn't make a difference. We have the source change log, which as always is a long one. And uh, you can go ahead and pause the video and read this, but it does look like they are doing a lot of hard work to make this ROM work great. Now notes are stating over here, SE Linux status is enforcing, CTS passes by default and banking apps are working fine. Android 11 firmware and OSS vendor G apps are included. So that's everything that they are saying about this particular ROM, but trust me, there's more to it. Now the moment you boot is the home screen, of course, this is not the wallpaper you will see. This is a OnePlus 10 Pro wallpaper. There is a dedicated video coming for wallpapers for MIUI 13, OnePlus 10 Pro and Pixel 6 Pro, all wallpapers in one video, watch that one. Anyways, you get a very, very basic and clean Android 12 look. So you do have your themed icons over here. Of course, I have enabled them. They are not enabled by default. You have the Google widget over here, a very, very clean look and feel to the user interface, right? You have the Google search bar at the bottom with Google Lens and Google Assistant shortcuts at the bottom right and left, which are working absolutely fine. To the left, of course, you have Google Feed. And the good thing here is despite having a 60 Hertz display, you will see that on this Android 12 ROM as well, Google feed is working smooth as butter. There is no problem whatsoever. Even if you talk about the multitasking menu, the animation for the multitasking menu is pretty rock solid and it looks great and it works great as well. You have the screenshot option over here along with the select option, which are working absolutely fine. Okay. If you go to the multitasking menu, once again, you do have split screen, pause app and app info. So these options are present and they work absolutely fine. Now, apart from this, if you press and hold on the home screen, you have home settings, which takes you to the Google Pixel launcher, which is the standard for launcher of choice in almost all the custom ROMs. I disagree there. I think launcher 12 is what they should use because it does offer a ton of customization. Nonetheless, this is not bad. You have add app icons to home screen, swipe to access Google app, overview suggestions, suggestions, search your phone and allow home screen rotation. So these features are present and they work absolutely fine. If we talk about the quick tiles from the top to bottom, we have a very standard Android 12 affair going on. Standard tiles over here, the edit menu is present, and then you have the restart menu over here, as you can see, and then you have the setting shortcut. Now you do have a screen recorder, which allows you to record internal and external audio. The good thing about K20 Pro is despite being a two year old device, whenever it is recording screen, there is no performance penalty. That is a good thing, right? Because now we are not only recording the screen, we are recording internal and external audio without root. And that is why internal screen recorders are very, very important on custom ROMs. So the smoothness is there. There is no performance penalty and that is always a good thing. So let's go ahead and stop the screen recording over here. And let's go to Google Photos to watch this before which I will increase the volume. So the audio is pretty decent, internal and external audio, and it works fine. Now, if you talk about Google Photos, you don't really have Google Photos unlimited storage, which is there on some custom ROMs. So that is unfortunate, but yeah, it's not there in this ROM. Now, specifically, if you talk about app icon animations, to my taste, they are a little slow, a little slow. They are not perfect, 
but you know you won't find them laggy or stuttery and stuff like that they work absolutely fine but they're just a little slow in my opinion now if you go to the quick tiles and you edit the quick tiles menu you have options like screencast and these privacy access tiles and you don't really have a lot of customization over here caffeine and all those things are not present you do have the dark theme toggle data server extra dim and all those things which are available now as far as the camera situation is concerned this particular rom comes with a very very basic camera application now you will see that i am trying anx camera over here the anx camera that i've tried in this particular rom is working absolutely fine minus two things portrait mode in anx will give you a force close just like this one and 48 megapixel mode even after applying the fix is not working and understand you have to have Majisk to install ANX, right? Now, I did try Gcam over here as well with a bunch of XMLs over here. So Gcam is force quitting when I'm going to the video mode even with the proper XML. So be it Gcam or be it ANX camera, you know, if you can compromise the 48 megapixel mode and portrait mode, you're good to go with ANX, but then you will need root. So that's the camera situation on this particular ROM. Now, let's actually go to settings over here. And let's go to about phone and let's go to the Android version 12. Now you do see that it has a very beautiful project Elixir logo. The boot animation on this ROM is also pretty nice, right? Now the version is 1.2. That is the device maintainer. Good job there. Google Play system update kernel version is the perf kernel over here. SE Linux status is enforcing. Now, when you go to settings in project Elixir, this is more like pixel experience because you don't really have a lot of customization. But you will see that you have game settings. That means the game dashboard is present. The Android 12 game dashboard has finally started showing up in a lot of custom ROMs, which is a really, really good thing. Now you have notifications, which gives you access to notification history. And, you know, as always, bubbles and all these things, these are Android 12 features and it doesn't make any sense to cover them again and again. But if you go to battery, you do have thermal profiles, which doesn't give you the option of 180 Hz touch sampling rate. So maybe that can be added later, but they are working on it and thermal profiles as well is doing a good job. Now, all the benchmarks that you will see from now on, I mean, in this particular video as well, I have ran them in the benchmark mode of thermal profiles. Now, if we talk about the battery usage over here, let's see here. As you can see, the phone has been idle for around 18 hours. Screen on time is 1 hour and 30 minutes. We are still at 60% battery, 59 to be precise. And it's not that I've not used the device. You can see that I've ran benchmarks. I've used a few applications, used telegrams and all those things. So, you know, I've used the device and the battery life seems to be decent. You should be getting at least four to five hours of screen on time minimum in performance mode. And that's pretty decent over 24 hours. As far as charging speeds are concerned, the charging speeds are pretty quick. You can use a 27 watt charger. You will get an additional boot boost because remember this device was shipped with the 18 watt charger but it supports up to 27 watts of charging now you do have options like turn on light when charging now the light is at the top battery percentage options and stuff like that now let's go to sound and vibration you have direct sound enhancer which is a very very standard thing charging sounds and vibration is present as well apart from this if you go to display you will see that you have a ton of options over here for example, always show time and info, wake screen for notifications, so lock the screen. Okay, you see that always on display is there and let's try to unlock the device. Bam. So the FOD on this ROM is absolutely fine. No problem whatsoever. Even if you leave it alone, like leave the phone idle for extended hours and then press the FOD while on always on display, it works fine. Sometimes it might take more than one attempt, but it's absolutely good. You cannot complain about that. You have the privacy option over here, add text on like lock screen and stuff like that. Screen timeout, smallest width, auto rotate and all those options are present. Now, something that I found missing over here is DC dimming. It's important for me, especially when shooting using a DSLR, DC dimming plays a very, very important role. Now, wallpaper in style gives you access to themed icons, which is absolutely fine and you know, the theming system is present on par and it works absolutely okay. So it will first download the wallpaper from Curated Culture and then you can go ahead and apply it. There you go. Everything works as expected, which is a good thing. There you go. Even the settings menu got colored in the theming, uh, you know, option of Monet, which is a good thing. Now under security, you don't really have face unlock. The fingerprint unlock as we spoke is working absolutely fine. Under advanced setting, you have smart lock and all those things, app pinning and things like those are present. 
Now, if you go to system, you have live translate, you do have front camera settings. Something that I would like to see in front camera settings is front camera calibration. If there is an issue in the front camera, you would want to calibrate and then if it is not there, you would want to install the front camera motor APK and stuff like that. Now, if you go to gestures, you have one handed mode, press and hold power button for assistant and all those things. Something that is missing is the three finger screenshot. Now, these are not additional features in 2022, three finger screenshots, OK Google, all those things are something which should be available and working. Let's log the screen over here. Hey Google. OK, so hey Google is working on lock screen, which is a good thing. Let's go ahead and unlock the device. There you go. So hey Google unlock screen works absolutely OK, no problems whatsoever. And apart from this, you have rules, you have backup and all the basic stuff which is present and it works absolutely fine along with Live Translate. The only thing that I said is the app icon animations are decent. They are not that great. You know, they're not doing a splendid job. Now, safety net passes by default. Play Store certification is there, so no problem whatsoever. Let's go ahead and talk about the CPU throttle test over here. All right, now the CPU throttle to 91% of its max performance. The average score was 192 390 GIPS, which is excellent. No problem whatsoever, good score. If you talk about N22, the same story continues over here. You will get 533 962, which is 534, which is a very good score for the Redmi K20 Pro. Remember, this device comes with a Snapdragon 855. If you also go to Geekbench over here, you go to history, you will see that 717 and 2503. Even the, you know, memory management on this particular device is pretty good. As you can see, the apps are not closing. The gaming experience from a casual gamer's point of view is pretty decent because that's what I am as far as gaming on smartphones is concerned. So if you ask me if you combine everything, Project Elixir, well, sort of there, you can use it as a daily driver. It's a very good performing ROM. The battery life is also pretty decent. The charging speeds are good. So if you want, you can actually use this as a daily driver and you should not have any problems even in gaming and other things let me know in the comment section what do you think about project elixir for the k20 pro until the next one this is kalash signing off at phone ops keep smiling take care goodbye